women have more irritable bowel syndrome than men and we'll dig for answers in this video. I always helped more women than men with IBS in clinic. Today, I want to share with you my thoughts based in science and in clinical experience so we can help more people together. Spoiler alert, the main reason is neither genes nor food. IBS has a female predominance. In Western countries, women with IBS can be more than double of the men, according with the meta-analysis of 2010. Also, women are more prone to constipation while men to diarrhea. This means that women with IBS have a greater prevalence of constipation-associated symptoms, particularly bloating and abdominal distension. Men have a greater prevalence of diarrhea-associated symptoms like watery stools and increased stool frequency. Irritable bowel syndrome is classified as a functional gut disorder. Symptoms of IBS involve debilitating abdominal pain, chronic and severe bloating, and abnormal bowel patterns. Patients with IBS can struggle with chronic diarrhea, constipation, or a combination of both. Functional means that the affected area is impaired and not working the way it should, however, there aren't abnormalities that can be observed. The cause of the problem cannot be physically detected. I personally disagree with this definition, but I will explain why later in this video. What can cause IBS? To understand why it affects more women than men, we need to remind what can cause IBS. The four main factors that can cause bowel disorders are diet, infections, medicines, mainly antibiotics, and stress or emotions. Diet. So there is any food that women eat more than men that can cause IBS? Women tend to eat more sugar than men. Too much sugar consumption alters the intestinal flora, promoting, for example, the increase of yeast. This might explain why women have more candidiasis than men. On the other hand, men eat more meat, and that also alters the intestinal flora and can lead to bowel disorders as well. Modern heating habits may be implicated, at least in some cases of IBS but don't seem to be responsible for gender differences. Infections I've never seen studies showing that women have more infections than men, so this won't be the cause either. Medication Antibiotics are very harmful to the intestinal flora. They are like atomic bombs, killing good and bad bacteria and can cause chronic disorders in the digestive system. I've never seen studies showing that women take twice more antibiotics than men, so they aren't responsible for the general difference. What about the anticonceptive pills? Women take them more for obvious reasons. Maybe, who knows? Never saw a study suggesting it. And how about hormones? Can they be implicated? Some studies associated female hormones with IBS and symptoms are heightened at time of menses. During menses, the sensory threshold decreases, enhancing visual perception. This is one plausible mechanism that, that is supported by some animal and human studies, where the decreases of ovarian hormone levels at time of menses may underlie the increased gastrointestinal symptoms. Here we have a possible explanation, but is this the cause? Not all women have IBS, but almost all menstruate before menopause. And if they are more aware of the symptoms, it is because they already have the problem, isn't it? Hormones are influenced by our mind of course, they are also influenced by what we eat. Eating too much sugar can alter testosterone and estrogen levels. But 
our emotions mess with our hormones as well and our hormones mess with our thoughts and feelings. And what about stress? Could it be the biggest cause of this gender difference? Stress doesn't affect everybody the same way. Even thought, the gender differences are small now than before. Men and women still have different life concerns and still face different challenges. And even in the presence of the same problem, men and women can have different reactions because the brain is shaped by hormones among other factors. So they will have different outcomes in regards of mind-body interactions. To understand mind-body interactions in IBS, we need to talk about the famous brain-gut axis. Fortunately, we now know more than before about the brain-gut axis to scientifically explain what so many health professionals and people already knew. Emotions affect the gut. Actually, thoughts and emotions mess with all our digestive system. In fact, we should say that thoughts and feelings affect our gut because, according with Antonio Damasio, emotions are generated in our organs and feelings are the mental experience of it. Our emotional state can have many consequences on our health and well-being. Negative emotions, such as anxiety, can influence the digestive system due to the bidirectional communications between gut and brain, namely the brain-gut axis. Serotonin is responsible for well-being and happiness sensation, but in the gut is the main neurotransmitter responsible for bowel movements. There are more neurotransmitters, but this one is the most important in controlling peristatical movement. In addiction, serotonin is also important for the feeling of visceral well-being, that peace that seems to come from the belly. We also know that IBS response to serotoninergic drugs appears to be more robust in women than in men. Serotonin drugs are medicines that increase serotonin levels, like some antidepressant drugs. So, here we have a connection between a happiness feeling, serotonin levels and IBS sensations. To understand this, we need to face that even in Western countries, women are more prone to be treated like second-class citizens, disrespected by men, subjugated by husbands, harassed by teachers or bosses, earning less for the same job and have, having less freedom and feel less secure. The inability or difficulty to be who they really are, to feel safe, to be respected and to stand up for their territory is the reason behind their hidden anxiety that leads to bowel disorders. The gut is affected by the insecurity and fear against our territory. Territory is our physical body, is our mind with our ego, our goals, dreams, beliefs, our material goods, and in some extent, our close family and friends. That's what I find out in my studies, clinical and life observations. A scientific study mentions that IBS patients were significantly more neurotic and less extroverted than the general population. Neurotic people are more likely than average to be moody and to experience such feelings as anxiety, worry, fear, anger, frustration, depressed mood. In other, in the other words, they are unhappy in an inner conflict. They are in a flight and fight response mode. This goes in line with what I just said. And what is the solution? What they should do to avoid IBS? Women with IBS need to stand up better for their territory, need to learn to express themselves regarding what other people think, 
surround themselves with people that don't manipulate them, that respect them among all. Why I don't like the term functional disorder? Because he's describing it like it was just a mechanical problem, not taking into account the role of thoughts and feelings. To understand better why you get sick, prevent and treat diseases, we need to start focusing more in the paper of food, lifestyle and emotions, and less on genes and chance. Because this is epigenetics, this is what we are, Homo sapiens. <laughs>